So now we turn our attention to the bright lights of Nollywood. And you know, Nollywood is our pride, producing many greats, one of whom is the person we're celebrating today. So ladies and gentlemen, join me to welcome actress Ijoma Agu to the Morning Brief on Channels Television. Hello. Good morning and welcome. Good morning. It's, Thanks for having me. It's great me. to see you. So Same. We can talk about, you know, the long list of films that you've featured in, Beyond Blood, um, Flower Girl, <laughs> Swallow, that yeah. we've just seen, just to mention a few. Yeah. And, you know, you're celebrated for uh, the how real your characters are, how you're able to project them. So two questions in one. I'd like you to give us a background to your training. And some people will be asking, yeah, we saw her in Swallow. Where has she been to start with? <laughs> uh, so which of the questions should I answer? <laughs> anyone, you can Pick start with any one of them, but you can answer both. Um, I've been resting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've been a mother. Um, just resting. Okay. Yeah. So, um, give us uh, an insight into your training you know, and your background. Um, I started off with stage years ago. Um, did a couple of uh, Shakespearean plays and then um, trained with the Jason Vision Renegade Theatre at Terra Culture at the time. Um, trained also at the Royal Arts Academy um, and then a couple of workshop over the workshops over the years uh, has helped hone what I do, basically. Brilliant. Um... So there's this thing I have, um, or there's this thing I do. Uh, we'll get to this beautiful picture <laughs> eventually. I, I know the production team face. <laughs> can't wait to get into this part of the story, but we need to, you know, get close and personal with you first. So I, I mean, I look at comedians and I love the craft. When like it, it takes a lot to really make people smile, not just smile, make them laugh and forget about their sorrows in spite of the economic situation. Then I look at actors and I'm like. You know, this is on another level as well, because you have to abandon your person, right? So there's who you are on a normal day, and there's the person you are when they say, is it Q now, action? Uh -huh. Which of them? Action. For us, it's Q ah. <laughs> on television. They say action, and you're no more, I mean, who you are yes. on a normal day. You switch and swallow, and that's what we call our saying. You were able to bring out that character. So we felt the character's fears, the character's stupidity, <laughs> <laughs> All of that, you were yeah. able to convey that. So I, I really respect actors. So when Bukala says, how did you become this person? I think it's for a lot of people who wonder, how do you do it? You switch and then you're able to interpret the character. So I'll ask in another way, uh -huh. right? Um, what goes through your mind when you're playing your character? Is it a hustle to make your 2K? Right? Because I have to do this well, yeah. or is it a hustle to really help people see that character and forget that this is a movie? Primarily, this is first and foremost a gift, right. you know, um, a gift from God, I would say. Just the way some people are able to dance, I can dance. Yeah. Uh, some yeah. are able to make others laugh. You're able to present, you know, be a newscaster. I, I think it's primarily first a gift at which you then hone the skill over time. Um, so for me, it comes naturally. But then the text helps me. The text, the material we're working with, the story, the arc of the character, the journey, these things help me where they're coming from, what they want in the scene, where they're going uh, overall. Um, they help in helping me bring the character to life. So for me, primarily, even though it's a gift, the text, the dialogue, the words, um, and the, the world of the character helps me get into character. And the costume, of course. Yeah. Okay. Uh, there's a question. Uh, I don't think I've ever asked any actor who came here, and I think you'll be the first, if I, if I remember correctly, which is, when we see behind the scenes, uh, and they're asking actors, oh, what, in, what made you take up this movie? And the person is saying, well, when I saw the script, and, and then you watch the movie, I say, how could you have seen this script? <laughs> and this is what you say, you saw the script and you enjoyed it, because some terrible movies I've seen, and the actor is saying, I saw the script. So it, it just makes me feel like, it's a, what Coyote said, it's like a 2K movie, it's not, 
You didn't see no script. Ah! <laughs> so for you, because you mentioned the issue of text, which is the dialogue, when you see a script and you read through the script, how do you just feel like this is going to be that movie that will be talked about? Because I know a director who once said, one of the ways you know a great movie is the reaction of the people after the movie ends in cinema. If the conversation continues, then that's it. So how you, does it work for you? You actually can't tell. Really? Movie making mm. is a risk, both for the investor and the practitioners mm. that bring it to life. You can't tell. Um, you may love the script, but there's so many things that go into making a film. It's such a collaborative medium that you cannot do it alone. And you do not know it all. So you are depending on the next person who understands and knows their niche to come bring their specialty into into play you bring your specialty and then we make this product you just can never tell the audience reception to it most times i like the script the audience don't like it most times i don't like the script and the audience like it so you just can never tell you have to also understand that this is a job it's a job that pays the bills. So sometimes uh, there are those um, considerations you give, especially if you have a child. Mm. Yeah. And you know, I noted earlier um, that you said you have been resting. Yes. And perhaps rest has been in Ghana. Yes. And perhaps rest has also got to do with, um, you can't be here, I have a girl <laughs> in the yeah. room. So talk to us about that. Um, yes, I have been resting. Um, but um, my life took a turn for good, uh, and I wrote about it. Um, and the book is out now. It's called You Cannot Be Here. <laughs> I have a girl in the room. So um, what's the book about, if you don't mind sharing? And how easy is it, was it while you wrote for you to you know, put yourself out there? Um, because you say you're writing about your experience. Um, was it a difficult decision to make? And um, what's your objective with the message that you want to, that you are putting out through that book? Um, the book was written in the moment of um, something I'll consider a great betrayal. And um, that, that got me numb. I wasn't speaking. The only way I could speak was to write on my on my notes on my on my phone, and and I would just write every day. I would write every hour. I would write something comes to my head. I'm writing, and so the book is a compendium of all of those thoughts that I was writing when I couldn't uh, speak as a result of the shock um, from the betrayal, and uh, the reason. I published was because in that moment, I felt so alone. I felt confused. I felt uh, conflicted. And I knew that it wasn't unique to me. And I said, um, if you put this out there, you, you may bring, bring some sort of soccer to someone who is presently or have gone through that and just felt alone like you are doing now. So it wasn't difficult to um, come to the conclusion to publish um, um, because I just wanted to share what happened to me, knowing that it, it's not unique to me and uh, it might give strength to someone out there. And, you know, I also wanted to show a part of, a vulnerable part of me, yeah. um, which is a work in progress, um, that, oh, okay, strong girls also cry. Absolutely. <laughs> and, and I think that's the case for yeah. everyone. Everyone is a work in progress. Yes. No one is made yet. Yes. Maybe until you're ready to pass on. Yeah. Um, and this is you basically showing us your real character, if I can say that. Yes. This, is, this is not scripted, I say. This is the real you. And yes. I'm just reading a post you put on Instagram, I think about a week ago, and you said, 226 days to exit, I suffered my first heartbreak, ended my 10-year marriage, and journaled my way through it all. You said, I wrote about that journey in my <laughs> memoir titled, You Can't Be Here, I Have a Girl in the Room. And... Um, I have an insight into what that book is about, the kinds of emotions that it will elicit. But uh, for a lot of people, as you said, that are maybe going through something similar and they can't even write a book or talk about it like you can, you want to help them. So your book is a brilliant body of work. But if they were watching right now and there's one thing that you found to be very helpful during that journey, what would that thing be? It would be my mind, the, the power in how you 
change your thinking, uh, how you persevere through the worst situation and just speak to your mind um, to look at it in a certain way. I, I think the power of the mind is such a, it was so pivotal for me uh, in shaping how I reacted and how I was able to come out of, of the pain of it all. Um, so, so for me, sharing this, it was a journey. Every, every entry was a journal entry and it's not written in chapters and you can see the journey, you can see the moments of conflict, you can see when she takes her power back, you can see when she rises, you know, like the phoenix. And uh, so, so I'm just saying to everyone, because we all go through pain in different mm. ways, listen, just channel your mind speak to your mind, speak to your inner person, who you are, your values, your fundamentals, and hold on to that, and, and you can come out on the other side. But does pain, does it leave you better or worse? Again, the power of the mind. You can choose if pain would leave you bitter, resentful, or if pain, you can take that pain and make something mm. out of it. I took my pain and I made it into a book. Is so, it, sorry, is this a story you want to take beyond? Sorry, is this a story you want to take beyond the pages of the book? Oh, it is. It is uh, an audio book coming out uh, very soon. It's also going to be a play and a movie. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Yeah. So there's so, enterprise inside it. Oh, yeah. So, uh, so for someone who's who may be in your shoes and is also journaling, um, is writing, emptying yourself, is it therapeutic? It was so therapeutic. Recording, I narrated, my daughter and I narrated uh, the audio book, it was so cathartic. And um, I, I would recommend, if, if you can get there, just just pour out, empty, don't don't keep it in. It could become carcinogenic <laughs> if, you, if you keep it in. Just just share, share. When you share, you, you just never know who is going through the same, who has gone through the same and can help you out of it with just some words of encouragement or this is the path I took. You know, just don't keep it in. So what are the projects? Uh, Night Jama is out from the, what do you call it now, rest or break, <laughs> yeah. whatever name you g give it. Uh, yeah. And now there's a book, yeah. uh, we, there's a copy of, as a matter of fact, and they know we'll show you on the screen as well. Um, the future, the next set of projects, or is this the next set of projects? Yes, it is. <laughs> Besides, are you going to be in other people's films? That's oh, what I, I mean. just finished I, filming recently. A couple of days ago, actually, and then I did. Um, uh, my, my friends, God bless them. Uh, we call ourselves the Coven. Uh, they organized. <laughs> <laughs> they organized like a reading uh, <laughs> session with uh, friends, well wishers, called in conversation with the author, and that was really, really, really wholesome. Um, so I'm hoping that can translate into a movement where, you know, we just sit and, and have conversations about things that are important, things that move us forward, things that uh, make us evolve into greater health. In your view as a people, are we vulnerable enough? No, we're not. I'm guilty of it. So this, this whole journey I'm happy to be on. Uh, it's helped me be vulnerable, be more open. And you see, say, you know, good day. <laughs> you get better, actually. I'm still at the point where you said you call yourselves the Coven. Yes, we call ourselves the Coven. <laughs> wow. For <Well>, wicked witches. <laughs> what a, I mean, what a thing. And, and I think it just speaks to how women also try to empower themselves. Empower each other. Listen, they just took over and all I had to do was dress up and show up and we're sitting on mats. I give you guys a video. You should play. Did it's you have really good. And, um, Oh yes, we had calabash, we had wine, <laughs> we had all of that, and you know we were doing, making right? concussions. Okay, <laughs> emotional the, concussions. Emotional concussions. Well, you know, it's quite interesting because yeah. you, you are you are quite versatile, not just uh, with your art, with your writing, also with your location. So you are eating from Nigerian jollof and eating Ghanaian jollof, and this is part where we just make things lighter. So I'm of course tempted to ask you. Which is your favorite? This is a point where you choose a side now. Because wow. the world is listening. Because you stay wow. in Ghana. Wow. Right? So is it Ghana Jello for you or Nigerian Jello for you? I'm going to make my people angry, but my daughter proud of me. She likes Ghana Jello. <laughs> and so I'm going to stand right by my child. Oh, my goodness. Yes. What, did you, what have you done? 
we, we lost a citizen. Right? Lost a citizen. <laughs> I hope this is not going to extend to football. We yeah. lost a citizen. Oh, my beautiful daughter. How old is she by then? She'll be 10 in August. Wow. Yeah. She's a dancer, a composer, a musician. She's an actress. She's she's just a bundle of talent. Voice of our artist. Now. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. She she voiced the, the narration. So on the... what would you like um, young girls to avoid uh, what are the things you look at your daughter and you're like i hope you don't make these mistakes i made because that's what parents do you're like yes. and sometimes you want to force it on them like mm. no don't do this not but, this child of mine right she but has what are those things mind. you would you would want to maybe pour your heart out to her and say you know what these are the mistakes i made and i do not want you to make those mistakes I think, first of all, um, and not just young girls, I think uh, as parents, we should try to imbo imbibe the culture of uh, autonomy and self-awareness yeah. early on. So you get to ask your kids questions about what they think about something. It might be something as inconsequential as what do you think about this glass? Um, how do you see it? Do you like it? Would you want to have it? Um, what food do you want? You know, give them that, that uh, power of choice. Um, so when we, when we, at the pivotal stage, their foundational stage, teach them to have the ability to make their own choice based off of knowing who they are, what they want, then when peer pressure comes, because it's going to come, um, they are able to say no because they are able to make their yeah. own choice and not pressured into what obtains. Uh, and then that dovetails into adulthood. And, and um, if, if it becomes something they're used to, they carry it on into adulthood. Mm. Yeah. Autonomy. We should learn to teach our children autonomy. That's yes. something that we've learned from this today, among so many other things. Uh, there's so many questions that we still have for you. For instance, I was going to ask if there are possibilities of you exploring the Ghanaian film industry. One word, yes or no? Yes, <laughs> no. I, have, I have been. I, I am an actor. I, I've I've been in Dutch films. I've been in yes. Hollywood films. I'm I am an actor. And are and you in the market? What market? Babes. Are you are you now? I like that. What market? market? Oh oh yeah yeah. I, I, like I said, I, I have I have actually been filming. Yeah. yeah. So you've not had time for the market. What market? The mingling market. <laughs> it was me. Oh, in the market. Yes. No, please, no. <laughs> you've got you know, but you, you, yes. You're going to be in the market pretty soon. No. Very in the. Let me heal. Mm. Uh, yeah. All okay. right. Stop yeah. taking. Arrange your merchandise. <laughs> Wait, totally All right. out of time. The potentials have noted that you've said that you're healing and they'll be back. They can, they, they will they come. can bring the money, but then go away. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Buy the book. <laughs> Send money for the film. <laughs> All right. And then go away. <laughs> thank you so much for being Grazie. on the program. Grazie. We appreciate your authenticity, your vulnerability, you. and your amazing lessons. I and wish your daughter, you... too. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> oh, her name is Brienne Oriehi. Oh, she she would love love that I mention her name. Yeah. She's a Leo, so she likes to be in the spotlight. <laughs> thank you for having me. Yeah, Absolutely. thank you so much. And that's it on the show today. We're just getting started. We promise you another bumper package. Same time tomorrow. I am Bukola Koka. Have a good morning. I'm Jeff Ruzong. And cut. But this is by no means the end of action. Sunrise Daily is next right here on Channels Television. I'm Kyle Okikele. Goodbye.